Small people carriers can be the perfect solution if you need more room than a traditional hatchback but aren't keen on going the full hog with an MPV. The facelifted C3 Picasso ticks that box, but what else does it do well? Its unusual look should turn heads and help you stand out a little bit from the crowd, as do the daytime running lights which come standard and give the C3 Picasso more road presence than before. And this boot should tick another box as well with its clever floating floor and low load lip and plenty of room to swallow some luggage. And there's a secret spy hole to see if there's any presents hiding in the boot. Better luck next time. Another useful feature is being able to move these seats forward so you can fit more presents or luggage in there. But now I'm going to turn this super mini MPV into a van, which is perfect if you and your partner have got a babysitter and you want to go and do a bit of shopping in Ikea because the floor is flat and the space is decent. There is a negative but we'll have to come back to that because we're going to do all of those in one go. Very firmly in the positives is the stylish dash with use of high quality materials and gloss black finish. The eMyWay satnav system located on the central console has more functionality. But I need to press some buttons, so I need to be in this shot. The new screen shows sat-nav and reverse parking camera if you went for that option. In fact, if you avoid the sparse entry-level model, you can enjoy things like air conditioning, body-coloured door handles and alloy wheels. There is a choice of engines, the most economical one being the HDI 90, which returns 67 mpg. However, if you're going to be doing a lot of town driving, you may wish to go for a petrol, which returns in the mid 40s. Anyway, enough of fuel consumption, what does it drive like? Well, despite its tall dimensions, the C3 Picasso actually provides a fairly comfortable ride. It feels smooth over these lumps and bumps, and general town driving is where it seems to be happy. Road and wind noise is kept to a minimum, and visibility is excellent, especially thanks to these unusually thin windscreen pillars. But that's where the good points end and the bad begin increase your speed too much and it is out of its depth around the corners with a tendency to wallow a bit. Take it onto the motorway and that refined cabin is now noisy, but worse than that are the crosswinds bashing into the side of it, which other cars such as the Nissan Note don't seem to be so susceptible to. Then there's the manual gearbox, it's quite clunky and for some it will be a bit of a chore. Now this car is aimed at families and they have lots of everyday items that need homes inside the car and despite there being a lot of space there's not really anywhere to put anything. There's no central storage, the glove box is tiny, a Vauxhall Mariva scores more brownie points here and despite me complimenting the screen the buttons to control its function are fiddly and as for the driving position well it's not great and the space to rest your foot next to the clutch is very small. It feels cramped even for my size fives. As is legroom. Especially if you steal a bit for that extra boot space. I told you I would come back to something here, but headroom is adequate, so no complaints there. However, Put these negatives to one side because you have a reasonably priced car to run, predictable servicing costs and distinctive looks. It's a serious super mini MPV contender.